Oh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Be Like Outdoors. If you're new here, my name is Sheldon Marion, and today I just got back from trying to locate some elk with no such luck. So I made her back to the camper here. Made myself a fresh cup of coffee. We're gonna load up the dogs here. We're gonna go after some grouse. back feet go up to where the tip of the breast is grab this skin and give it a pull down towards its head and that way it exposes everything we have our first chicken you guys just stay here okay buddies See him just walking up this hill. Well, where the heck did he go? Oh, there's a little lynx pen right here. That's pretty nifty. So right there they probably put a 330 bear. Back here they put their bait and they brush this all in. So the lynx or wolverine had to come through there to get to the bait. And they get nabbed in the trap. That's pretty cool, see? But we found ourselves a chicken. See if we can get him. Oh, man, the thing's already getting spooky. Well, I had to be quick on that one. He was getting ready to run. <laughs> now it looks like he might have went down a hill, though. Where is he? He might have went into that water. Oh yeah, there he is floating. <laughs> ah. Dang it. I wonder if my dog will actually retrieve it for once. <laughs> I can climb down there. I'll just put the gun down and go for a hike down this little hill. Out of all the places, good went. You had to go in the water. There we go. Nice little waterlogged chicken. 
<laughs> there you go. One wet bird. Well, if you're new to chicken hunting and uh, you're wanting to get into this, if you live in a place where it's legal to uh, to road hunt for them, uh, like it is up here in northern BC, uh, you know, it's by far the most common way to hunt chickens. Especially when you find roads like this one here, where you can see there's a bunch of grass on both sides of the road. And then also on both sides of the road, you have this real thick willow cover so with this stuff here with all this thick willows uh, it gives the chickens a place to kind of run and hide and all that stuff from all the predators uh, another good place that you'll find a lot of grouse especially rough grouse is in with all like the poplar trees where cranberries are growing uh, because cranberries are a huge food source uh, for the grouse and then also one thing you should be looking for is this small little pebble gravel that's on the road here you can see all this real tiny small rock and what that's important for is that the chickens will actually come out onto the road not only will they eat the grasses and the clovers and stuff that are growing on the side but they need that little bit of pebble rock and roughage to go inside their gizzard because in their gizzard moves everything around and it grinds up all the food that's in there that's in their uh, gizzard so uh yeah a road like this is just absolutely perfect you see roads like this up here and we drive down because we just go hey there's a good chicken road and uh yeah it doesn't take much to to figure it out and then also one thing you can do while you're driving around i go nice and slow with the window rolled down and you might not be able to see the chickens but there's been a lot of times where you'll be driving and you'll hear a chicken you'll hear them just kind of running along here or running up through the tall grass or once in a while you'll hear one kind of take flight in the in the ditch right here and they'll just kind of fly up into the trees right in here kind of a deal and uh, if you didn't have your window rolled down driving nice and slow you never would have heard them so anyways, that's my two cents on uh, pretty well road hunting grouse. And uh, yeah, it's, it's fun and enjoyable. You can bring your dogs with you. And you can bring your kids, your wife, grandma, grandpa, uncle, cousin, whatever. You can bring everybody with you and there's not a bunch of walking involved. And uh, yeah, it's just a nice, fun little way to get outside and uh, enjoy a nice little afternoon drive. And, possibly get some supper and uh yeah cruise around listen to some music bs whatever it is and just uh enjoy your time outside well i was just talking about hearing a chicken run and right in here i just heard one run up this hill in the thick of it in there maybe what I'll do is I'll just kind of run up here and see if I can see them oh I think he just took off on me yeah he ran up to right in here and then he flew off somewhere Oh, a little pot liquor. We got a chicken right down the middle of the road. Hopefully he had some friends there with him. Today has been a few singles. And I kept missing the buggers, but let's see what happens this time.
Just missed them. Oh well. Sitting there bobbing his head a bunch. Off to the next one. Sorry guys, you gotta stay in here, my friends. See if I can get this one. No spruce gross. I just can't hit It's been tough to you take these long shots of these birds too. There's a little chicken right here with his head in the grass. Hopefully he stays there. A bit closer to this one. Looks like there's three of them. Got one and the other one dropped right over here. Well, the gun's definitely sighted in. You can see you got him right in the head. You can hear one that's over in there. Then one also flew right here. Man. One just flew up into a tree right here. Plus we got one running somewhere over there. Well, we got one. There's a few more in here, but they keep just kind of, they keep flying over. And then they run, and they'll fly, then they'll run, they'll fly, and they'll run. So I had two going that way, one going that way. And then they had all just kind of going down to that thick stuff. So we're going to give up on those ones. I'm going to grab this guy here. And uh, keep on going. Dang. I got one, the other one's took off, eh? I can hear another one chirping at me. I don't see him though. Nice headshot. I think he's up in this spruce tree here. Oh, there he is. Oh. Missed him. 
We got one anyways. That's good enough for me. It's kind of funny the area that we're in here. I just uh, ran into a black bear that was right in the ditch and he must have been eating on something because he didn't care about me at all. I stopped, turned on the big camera there and I zoomed right in on his face. He was maybe 15 yards. He didn't care. And then uh, came around the corner, like maybe 200, 200 yards away, and uh, there was a grizzly bear <laughs> walking down the road. So I tried to turn on the camera, but it wasn't quick enough, and he he took off running, and then uh, yeah, came down here, got ourselves a chicken. Pretty good road. <laughs> Couple more chickens. Looks like some rough grouse. Well, we ran upon a couple more chickens here. Well, you guys, it was another day of me missing a bunch. <laughs> Between these chickens just being real skittish, uh, it's early September too, so the chickens are still just real small. Uh, the spring chicks they usually don't get full size until about October. And uh, yeah, but anyways, we managed to bag a couple of them and seeing how I just seen a coyote run across the road right there, I figured this would be a good time to uh, to stop and clean up the birds give him something to eat so with my birds here like you've seen probably about a dozen times here now grab them by the back feet go up to where the tip of the breast is grab this skin and give it a pull down towards its head and that way it exposes everything and then here I take my thumb and I just pull that stuff away and then you can see right here is their neck. So I take my finger, put it in there, grab the neck or the spine, and you simply just pull it away. Now what that leaves you is this real nice clean bird here. And then all the guts and stuff are in that one. So now with this clean bird, what I do is I go around the edges here and uh, just pull off any of these little stray feathers. Just, you don't have to. It just keeps the meat slightly cleaner. And uh, yeah, then that way, see it's nice and clean there. And again, you don't have to do that, but it's just something that I do. Cause just, I don't know. It's a habit, I guess. But then this way, when you're all said and done, once you get all like these little straggler feathers, get off of me. There we go. You have this real nice clean bird inside and out. And uh, with us up here, it might be different where you are, 
but we have to leave at least one wing attached and it's easier just to leave them both on so I'll leave them on grab my little Safeway bag put my bird in there and the bird it's in my little cooler there's an ice pack in here so everything's staying nice and cold and away we go we have a couple more here to clean up and then we'll head her back to camp and we'll get to cooking something up here alrighty see you back when we get to camp here you go Mr. Coyote oh Wiley Coyote <laughs> alrighty guys so we're gonna start cooking up some supper here now and uh, I'm not exactly too sure what it is that I'm making uh, basically what I got here is one whole onion that's just kind of finely sliced up. Uh, I got a whole bell pepper. And then I'm going to cook it in some sesame oil, oyster sauce, soy sauce, poison sauce. And once is the peppers and uh, onion are nice and soft, I'm going to throw in, uh, well, four chicken breasts. So it's two uh, grouse that I shot there. I just deboned it and then sliced it up into small little pieces. And then once that's all cooked up, I'm going to throw in maybe about a half of a cabbage, all real thinly sliced, and uh, yeah, see what happens. Uh, so yeah, I'm kind of making a stir fry, but uh, yeah, you can call it what you want, and uh, <laughs> we're going to give her a go. Alrighty, so we're going to start this off with a hot pan and a bunch of sesame oil. Gotta give this a little bit of a stir here. I kinda coat the bottom of that pan. Then we're just gonna grab our plate of onions and peppers, toss her in here. And pretty well we're just gonna mix this all up until it's all kinda somewhat mixed up and mingled and these onions are all separated. Uh, maybe before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some salt. And we got quite a bit going in here, so I'm going to use use it pretty heavily. Uh, some garlic powder. That's all the garlic powder I'm going to put in there for right now, because with the garlic powder, uh, just like using regular garlic, uh, it'll burn and a little bit of pepper now what i'll do is i'll just kind of slowly cook this up until everything starts to become nice and uh, kind of translucent and soft and we'll add in our chicken until it's cooked up uh, and then after that it'll be the cabbage and then sauces i guess maybe in that order I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> I'm just kind of experimenting here tonight. I, I don't think I've ever made this before. But uh, you see everything here. It's all pretty well mixed up. So now what we're going to do is just kind of let that kind of sit over the fire. And we're just going to let that cook and soften up. And uh, yeah, we'll just kind of go with the flow here and see what happens. Alrighty, so I got the onions and peppers cooked down a little bit, and they're looking not too bad. So now I'm going to take our chicken, toss that in there. Kind of hard to do with just the old one hand. There we go. And now we're going to mix this up. And once this chicken starts to brown up a little bit, we'll add some more sauces. And it'll also reduce these onions down quite a bit more. And so now we're just kind of waiting until the chicken cooks. And then uh, yeah, we'll throw in some soy sauce, hoisin sauce, and oyster sauce. I did throw in about a, a tablespoon of soy sauce just to help uh, soften up these onions a little bit faster. But now we'll get this chicken kind of right in the middle so it starts to cook up. And uh, yeah. 
Okay, so now we have our chicken pretty well cooked up here. I'm gonna grab some oyster sauce, put that in here, kind of thick stuff. I don't know how much we'll put in here. That's probably about one, two, three tablespoons. Uh, we got some hoisin sauce. This will add a little bit more than that. Probably about half a bottle. And then we'll top it off with just some regular old soy sauce. Just a little splash of that. And now what I'll do is I'm going to add a little bit more garlic to this. And now we can add quite a bit because it will be in the sauce and we're just going to kind of be simmering this instead of cooking it so we shouldn't burn the garlic. Uh, I'm going to mix this up and then I got a bunch of cabbage that I'll throw in there afterwards here as well. Okay, so we got everything all mixed in here. Uh, and now I'm going to take uh, some cabbage, thinly slice this stuff, throw that in there. And then I got a whole bunch more here off to the side. I'm going to throw in a little bit more. Thing with cabbage, once this stuff starts to cook up, it reduces down to like a third of the size. It's like, kind of like spinach, I guess, in a way. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm going to mix this all up here so when the cabbage is nice and saturated with that uh, sauce. And we're going to let the uh, cabbage kind of cook down here and soften up. And right now, like, it, it smells just like a absolutely delicious, like, sweet and sour sauce almost. So I'm curious to give it a go. And, uh, yeah, I'll let you know how it turns out here once they get everything all mixed up and cooked down some more. Alrighty, so I just turned the heat off and I dished myself up a plate of this here. And uh, it's quite the concoction. It <laughs> it smells incredible. So uh, we'll give this a taste. Grab a little bit of everything here. We got cabbage, pepper, a little bit of chicken. We'll give her a go. Mmm. I don't even know how to describe that. <laughs> you can taste a little bit of sesame oil in there. You can definitely taste the oyster sauce, which I end up putting a little bit more in there. So it's a, it's a fairly sweet sauce. I basically use this soy sauce to kind of like deglaze the pan kind of a thing. And then yeah, about a half a bottle of this poison sauce. And just... A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and a whole pile of garlic powder. And man, that this is good. I've had something that tastes kind of similar to this at like an Asian noodle place. But I, I don't even remember what I ordered there. But man, this is really good. Nice and sweet. The chicken's nice and tender. It's not incredibly salty or anything. And yeah, this one's good. Uh, next time Shelby comes out here, I might have to make this again for her to try. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Definitely give this a try. Uh, doesn't look overly too good, and uh, but I'm telling you, it's excellent. And with the cabbage also, I didn't cook it down until it was right tender soft. The cabbage actually still has like that slight little crunch to it. So if you want to change it up a little bit, I would say once you're done and you're ready to eat it, maybe grab some like raw egg noodles crush them up and throw them in there add a nice little touch of crunchiness to it i bet you'd be just spot on amazing or even better but anyways guys hope you enjoyed that video uh if you did hit the like button down in the corner leave me a comment or two maybe give me an idea for a recipe for the next video and uh yeah subscribe to the channel we'll catch you on the next one